Now here's another diagram that can help you think about orbits. This is the Earth in the middle, and here's the Moon orbiting the Earth. And right now in this diagram, the Moon is moving in this direction. So this vector right here represents the Moon's velocity. We'll call it V. This vector right here is the force of gravity pulling on the Moon, so that's why we have the F there. Now without gravity, according to Newton's first law, the law of inertia, the Moon would just continue to move in this path. It would continue to move in a straight line because any object in motion tends to remain in motion in a straight line at a constant velocity unless acted on by an outside force. So the Moon would just continue to drift along that path if there were no gravity. But because there's gravity, that's an outside force that affects the motion. Gravity you see here is pulling at a right angle to the direction of motion. So that causes it to move, that causes its uh, path to bend away from this otherwise straight line path. Instead of continuing along this path, it's pulled down basically toward the Earth. So gravity pulls it away from the otherwise straight line path. So we can, we can say that gravity is the force that holds an object in orbit. So if you want to know why it doesn't drift away, it's because of gravity. Gravity is the force that holds it in orbit. And then if you want to ask, ask the question, what keeps it up there? Why doesn't it fall to Earth? What keeps it up there is its horizontal speed. It's moving to the right, so as it falls, it doesn't actually hit the Earth. It, in a sense, misses. It's falling down, but it's landing... Uh, over here instead of falling there and hitting the earth. It's moving to the right fast enough that it falls and constantly misses the earth. You can think of the moon as constantly falling. Think of this path right here as a downward fall. It's constantly falling but constantly missing the earth. It comes on around here and the whole time you can think of it as falling toward the earth but missing. And that's a good way to think of an orbit. Any object that is in orbit is called a satellite. So the moon is a satellite of the Earth. And the moon is the only natural satellite. Mars has two moons. They're very small, but it has two natural satellites. And some of the planets in the solar system have a dozen or more. Like Jupiter and Saturn, for example, have lots of moons around them. In any case, they're all referred to as satellites. Now, there are also artificial satellites. We've launched communication satellites and other satellites, spy satellites that circle the Earth and orbit, and they orbit according to the same principle. We send them up with the rocket, and they might be in a lower orbit than the moon, but they're moving along at a certain speed, and they, in a sense, fall toward the Earth with, without ever getting any closer because of their horizontal speed. A satellite that we have launched that is orbiting the Earth is called an artificial satellite as opposed to a natural satellite. But any object in orbit can be referred to as a satellite. The same principle of orbiting bodies applies to the solar system as a whole. If you imagine the Sun as the center of the solar system and then the planets going around the Sun. For example, the planet Mercury is here and it's moving in a circular path around the Sun. It's the planet that's closest to the Sun. And then Venus, we'll draw Venus over here. It's the next planet out. It's orbiting. And then the Earth. The Earth is orbiting the Sun. Mercury, Venus, and Earth. And Mars is a little further out. It's orbiting around. And, and, and then so on. After outside of the orbit of Mars, there's what's called the asteroid belt lots of chunks of rock orbiting around, and then Jupiter and Saturn and Uranus and Neptune, and then Pluto way out there, although Pluto has recently been declassified. It's no longer considered a planet. But all of these objects are orbiting the Sun. And the same, the same principles that describe the motion of the Moon around the Earth also describe the motion of the planets around the Sun. They're in orbit. They're held in orbit by the gravitational pull of the Sun. The, the Earth doesn't just drift aimlessly through space. The Earth in this diagram right here is at this moment moving this way, but it doesn't continue to move that way because the gravity of the Sun pulling on the Earth pulls it away from that otherwise straight line path.
gravity holds the Earth in its orbit around the Sun, and the other planets are held in their orbit, orbit around the Sun by the Sun's gravity. And we'll talk more about the solar system and the planets later on in this course.